What I'm thinking of doing today is presenting, presenting problems from old quizzes, leaving you a little bit of time to think about them on your own, but, but not too much, although we can cover as much as possible. Um, I don't know, would you prefer, so, so I, that's what I'm thinking of doing. If people have questions on general problems, maybe we can leave time in the end and you can ask me questions on specific problems. So is that okay? Do you agree? Yes? I think, well, I have a set that I'd really like to do, okay? Because this is from a, some old quizzes that are not, whose solutions are not posted on the net, okay? And then, and then if you like, you can, uh, you can do specific ones. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so we're mostly going to cover um, orthogonal mate, I mean, so, so what you have on the quiz. Okay, so let me start with problem one on determinants. This is from the one quiz that is, whose solutions are not posted. So it's, um, let's see, uh, December 1st. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it's the one quiz whose solution is not posted. Okay. Yeah, yeah it doesn't, it doesn't it indicate what, what the year is. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so, so, so anyway, I'll, I'll give the first problem and so you, you'll be able to find it. Okay. So let A be a 5 by 5 matrix such that the determinant of A is equal to 3. Okay. Find the determinant of 2 by determinant of minus a, determinant of a cubed, determinant of a t. Okay, and the harder one is all right, determinant of b, where b is obtained from a. By performing the operations. Right. One, add four times first row to third row okay. to interchange. Row one and three, and three multiply second column by five. Okay, okay. So this is a primer to a primer on determinants to show you that it. Uh, all right. To, uh, all right. Maybe take one minute. Take one minute to. To see if you can um, come up with ideas, and then I'll present the solutions. Okay. Okay. Anyone? Any idea? <clears throat> any idea? Really? No. No one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, for, for all of it. Let's with one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, two A's, two to the fifth. Yes. Uh, okay. So okay. determinant. Yeah. When you multiply, remember when you multiply a whole matrix. A whole matrix by a, by a by a number, then the determinant changes by bringing out that number to the fifth to the dimension of the matrix, two to the fifth times determinant a. Okay, and we've been told that determinant a is three, so that's three times two to the fifth. Okay, and number two is exactly similar. Determinant of minus a, okay, is just minus one to the fifth times determinant a. Plus minus two to the um, minus two to the fifth. I'm sorry, minus three. Okay. All right. Now, the next one, the next one, determinant a cubed. Determinant a cubed. Does anyone remember what is the determinant of a product of two matrices? Two 
the determinant of a product of two matrices. The product of is the product of the determinants. Okay. Right. But now, now we don't. Well, do we quite have a product? A a B cubed. Cubed. Right. So it's a times a times a. So this is determinant a times a times a. Okay. Now this is just determinant a cubed. So it's three three uh, cubed. All right. And determinant A transpose. How does the determinant change when you take the transpose of a matrix? How does the determinant change when you take the transpose of a matrix? It does not change. It does not change. This is determinant A. Which is again three. And now the last one. The last one. Now, so, so. Okay, so let's see how to how to write this. So when you add, when you have a given matrix A, okay, and you produce a new matrix by picking the first row and adding it to the to the adding some some. Let, let, let me ask a simpler question. Suppose you have a matrix A and you produce a new matrix by adding the first row to let's say the third row. How does the determinant change? It does not change. So, so see the thing to write perhaps is first operation leaves the determinant invariant. Now, what about the second operation? Okay, so we performed the first operation, and the determinant is invariant. When we do the second operation, what happens? When you switch two rows, yeah, you put a negative. So second operation, reverses the sign. OK, what about, let's see now. And what about the third operations? When you, yes? Yep. Yes, you're right. You're actually right. right, 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 right. What? The sweet drop. Right, 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 right. So okay. So it is a minus. Okay. Now what happens with the right? And what happens when you multiply a column? When you multiply the whole matrix, when you multiply the whole matrix by a number, it brings out two to the n, where n is the dimension of the matrix. If you multiply a single column or a single row, it just bring out the number. Okay. Third operation. It brings out uh, factor five. Okay, so the answer is what? Can we get what? Multiplying by a column is like multiplying by a row. No, you don't multiply by a column. You pick out one column and you multiply by a number. Okay, then the determinant is changed by just bringing out that number. Okay. 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 And a way to okay. So why is it that when you multiply a matrix by two, you bring out two to the fifth? Because like you have five rows and you're multiplying each of them by two, hence two to the fifth. Okay. So the, so determinant of five, five is it, it, first, first operation left it invariant. The other one put a minus, and the third one multiplied by five. Okay, that's negative five times the, rib, the original determinant. So it's negative third, fifteen. Okay. 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 <clears throat> okay. Any questions on this one? Okay. You have to remember the rules, just the rules. Uh, yes? Sorry, I, I still don't see a number of my sign. You're yeah, okay, so, so, so let's see. If you switch, well, okay, so the thing is, if you switch, let's see, if you switch rows I and J, switch rows, switch, uh, switch rows, is this correct? One sec. Uh, I think the rule is if you switch rows i and j, you bring out a factor of negative 1 to the i plus j. Is that correct? But isn't that if mm -hmm. i and j are adjacent? No, it doesn't have to do if they're adjacent or not. No, l let me just think. Let me just think. Uh, I think this is correct. 
wouldn't that make it Maybe I minus j, and then even there are matrices that make sense. No, it doesn't even it doesn't matter what because either i for j is. What? Yeah. If you switch two rows. Yeah, so that's correct. That's definitely correct. If you switch two rows, it brings out a negative one. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I think. So, so actually, I don't think they have to be adjacent. I don't remember that. But anyway, I'm not, I haven't taught this course in many years. Okay. Okay, anyway, the answer is you bring out a negative one. The three dimensional. Now, the second question is about finding an orthonormal <laughs> basis, which is actually not on this quiz. So th I'm not going to do the second question. So th this had part A and part B. Part B is about finding an orthonormal basis, and I, I understand that's not on your quiz. So, so we won't do it. Wait, sir. Yes? Yes? It's, I can ask you by myself when they're solving the problem. About this one? It's not about this. It's a different one. Okay, never mind. It's about applying one formula, one formula. So this is quite an easy problem. It's about applying one formula. Does anyone remember the one formula? You form a matrix. You form a matrix. So answer. You form a matrix A by doing what? You just make the columns. You make these vectors into the columns of the matrix. Okay, so form this matrix, form the matrix. All right, and then what's the, what's the volume? Does anyone remember? Square root of the what determinant? The square root of what determinant? Okay. A transpose, okay. And let's put let's put an absolute value to be safe. It's a, a transpose. A transpose A, okay. So we just add a column of zeros to the right of the three columns. No, that'll no, that's wrong. <laughs> if you put a column of <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah. Okay, I only saw this. That's okay. So, no, if you add a column of zeros, the determinant will be zero. If you add a column of zero on the right, it will be zero? The determinant will be zero, I guess. You have a zero column? Yeah. Right? Okay. Anyway, so this is it. So we have to calculate the, so we just have to do the product and, uh, and find the determinant. OK. So, so what is AA transpose? Let's see. Uh, 1, 1, 1. Uh, 1, negative 1, 0. 1, 0, negative 1. 1, 2, 1. Multiplied by? Okay. What? Yes, damn. Yeah. <laughs> So let's rewrite everything. Okay. One, 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 make it one, zero. Determine the OK, so we have to find the product of the matrices. So it is. So let's find the product of the matrices. So uh, all right. So can someone help me? This is the determinant. Some, someone tell me what the matrix is. First line, first column, that's 4. OK, 
first line, second column, that's 1 minus 1, 0, 2. So that's 4 again, right? Then it's 2. 1, 0, right, 2. You're right. Uh, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. <coughs> One zero zero two. One plus one zero two four. So someone someone correct me if I'm wrong. One zero zero two, so that's three. Uh, one plus zero, negative one zero, one one. Um, what? Yeah, I got it wrong again? What? Right, 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 sorry, so three and four. Yeah. I made a mistake? Two, two. The middle is what? Okay, and what, are, and what are these? Wait, these I didn't calculate. So what is this? So here, all right, let's, let's just do it. So one, right, it's, so, right, so this is three, and what's this? One zero plus one three. Okay, is this correct? I don't believe so. You don't believe so? I think so. Never mind. Okay. So unless you can prove me wrong, I believe it's correct. Okay. All right. And so the determinant turns out to be what it is. So, so, so it's square root four times eighteen minus nine is nine minus two uh, six minus three times three. Plus, plus six, minus six. Yeah. Thirty-six minus six, three to thirty. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have a question. Is 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 B three for you? Uh, is the is the fourth term of B three the negative one on your sheet? Because it's certainly the negative one on my sheet, which I think explains. Is V two coming in? No, I'm sorry. The fourth. Yes, it's negative one. You're negative one. You're right. You're right. So, so that, that screws everything up. Okay, but anyway, this, you just apply this formula. So you just apply this formula, and you get, and you get the answer. Okay. Okay, let's do another easier one, and then we'll get do a few harder ones. Okay. So finding eigenspaces is not on the quiz this year. Is that right? You don't have to. Right. So we're just going to do something simpler. Okay. Find eigenvalues and the trace of Okay. Who can tell me the trace right now? What's the trace? Three. Right. Remember this in a minute. Okay. So, trace is equal to three. Okay. How does one find the eigenvalues? Okay. This is a sim. Yes. Yeah. All right. So eigenvalues are solutions of. Yeah. 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 All right. Solution. The equation determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to 0. What sort of equation, would, before we even find, before we even do the calculation, what sort of equation is this going to be? Yeah, a polynomial. Polynomial and cubic of order 3. Of order 3. Do we always know how to solve every uh, polynomial equation of order 3? No. OK? So that's why, usually, one has to pick the numbers so that it works out. OK. So we have to find the determinant of let's see, 3 minus lambda, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative lambda, 1, 2, 4, negative lambda. Determinant of this equals 0. So let's see. So this will give 3 minus lambda times the determinant of this matrix, okay? which is lambda squared minus 4, okay? minus twice the determinant of this matrix. So minus twice, uh, let's see now, that's, that's going to be lambda minus 2. Okay. And um, 
minus 1, the determinant of that matrix, so negative 4 plus lambda. Okay, so the equation we derive is, the equation we derive is, wait, is what? No, I don't think so. Oh, negative, I have negative 1. Wait, 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 what are you uh, talking about? Yeah, the final term, negative 4 plus 2 lambda. No. Yes, you're right. Okay, so if one expands out, if one expands out, is there, is there any way not to expand out? Is there any way not to expand out? Can anyone see? Yeah, so, so in principle, we always factor out, and we, um, in principle, we always write out the equation, some constant times lambda cubed, some constant times lambda squared, and so on, okay? Um, and I'm going to do that now, okay? You could see, before you even factor out, is there some common factor in these three terms? It turns out there is. In general, there will not be, though. So let me do the most general method. So we factor out, and we get, let's see, minus lambda cubed, okay, plus 3 lambda squared, plus 4 lambda, minus 12, minus 2 lambda, plus 4, minus 2 lambda, plus 4. Is equal to 0. Okay. So the, what we have to solve is minus lambda cubed plus 3 lambda squared. All right, now let's see. Plus 4 lambda minus 1 lambda. So these just cancel. Okay. And then uh, minus 4. Okay. And to make it more pleasing, let's multiply by minus 1. So let me just get this minus plus. Okay, okay. Now, we want to find the roots of this equation. We want to find the roots of this equation. Let me remind you one thing, in case you, it turns out to be useful in the final. If you have a third order equation, there's no general formula that you've learned that will give you all the solutions. Okay. But in one particular case, in a particular scenario, there is something worth trying always. So if the coefficients are integers, as they are here, are integers, Okay. You look for the divisors of the of the of the uh, zeroth order term. Try the divisors of the zeroth order term. Okay. Okay. This will not always work. It will not always work. But um, at any rate, it's worth trying. So, what are the divisors of four? Anyone? 4, 1, 2, and negative 2. Okay. So I believe it will turn out. Right. So, right. so we observe. So. so you try the values. Lambda equals 1. Lambda equals 4. Lambda equals, well, plus minus 1, plus minus 4, plus minus 2. Okay. You try these values into this equation and see if any one of them gives you 0. In this particular case, it turns out that lambda equals 2 works. So lambda equals 2 is a solution. Okay. Now, for a cubic equation, for a cubic equation, if you find one solution, if you find one solution, you can find all of them. Okay. For a cubic equation, if you can find one solution, then you can factor it. You can factor out the left-hand side. Okay. Into um, it can be factored, and then you you can find the solution. So let's call this one. Okay. Okay. So so let's see. So because because lambda equals two is a solution, the equation can be factored factored. Okay. So actually, we can even go here. We can even go here and factor it. So. Factor out the lambda minus 2 and see what, what else remains. From the first term, you'll get a 3 minus lambda times lambda squared minus 4 can be written as what? Lambda minus 2 times lambda plus 2. That's times lambda plus 2. Okay. Here, we have lambda minus 2 times the negative 2. 
Okay. And here, now, this can be written as twice lambda minus 2. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, twice lambda minus 2, and we have the minus 1, so that gives us minus 2 again. Okay, so we found the one solution lambda minus 2. That means that our equation can be factored. You can factor out the lambda minus 2 and left with a quadratic, with a quadratic expression. Okay, and you can always find the roots of a quadratic equation. So that's a little secret. Okay, so we've derived this is lambda minus 2. And then the remainder is, let's see, minus lambda squared uh, plus 3 lambda minus 2 lambda plus lambda plus uh, 6 minus 4 is equal to 0. So this thing is, um, we can write it as um, minus lambda squared plus lambda, lambda plus, plus 2. Okay. So what do we have to do? So we found, we found one root of the equation, one root of the equation. We're now asking, does this thing have any roots? Does this thing have any roots? Okay. okay, so let's just write it because minus lambda squared minus lambda minus 2. Okay. And what do we do to determine if a quadratic, if a quadratic polynomial has roots or not? We look at the discriminant. D is equal to negative 1 squared minus... 4 times minus 2, which is 9, so it's positive. So this has two solutions. Lambda 1 equals 2. Uh, lambda 1 equals 2. Uh, minus b, 1 plus or minus square root of 9 over 2. Okay. Okay. Lambda equals this. 1, 2. So the two solutions are 1 and uh, minus 1. So we what, are the are the of matrix? what are the eigenvalues of our matrix in the beginning? Okay. What are the eigenvalues? Okay. 2, 1, and negative 1. Okay. So the eigenvalues. OK, so the solutions, let me write it here. The solutions of. I'm sorry, what? You're right. I'm sorry, so you're right. It's 2, 2, and negative 1, right? So the solutions of, of equation star are 2, 2, and negative 1. Okay? So how, do, how is this phenomenon called if you have 2? Um, if you find the same solution twice, basically, what, what is this phenomenon called? The solution has algebraic multiplicity 2. So algebraic multiplicity 2. Okay. 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 So much for determinants. All right, so, okay, so let me just to remind you, this is a, a rather simple exercise. You just have to apply the, you just have to apply a definition and then solve, uh, solve an equation, okay? So you're given a three by three matrix and you're asked, what are the eigenvalues, okay? The, the simplest way to, I mean, yeah, the, the most standard way to find eigenvalues is you form, you say that the, the eigenvalues will be solutions of this equation. Of the equation determinant minus a minus lambda i. So you have to form the matrix a minus lambda i, evaluate its determinant, okay, and then find all solutions of this polynomial equation. This polynomial equation. Okay. The higher order the polynomial, the harder it is to do. Okay. But anyway, um, one can see that lambda minus two factors, and so you're left with a quadratic equation which you can always solve. Okay. okay. All right, any questions? Questions? Yes. In this example, would you use um, would you try converting that into a upper triangular matrix? Yes, you could do that. Yes. I mean, would the calculations be the same? You could do that. 
Yes, I don't know if it's in this particular example. In general, you try to solve this equation. You could do what you're saying, too. But it's roughly, I don't know, it depends on the example. OK. Now, let's do, well, I have a word problem, which takes quite long to write out. Um, all right. So actually, let's not do this. Let's do, let's do a slightly harder one. OK, let's do a slightly harder one. And then we'll do the word problem, but in, but in the meanwhile, let's do a harder one. Okay. Let A, so this is problem five. Let A be an n by n matrix, all of whose entries Are equal to one. Okay. Find the rank, the rank of A, and the dimension of its of the kernel of A. Okay. B, find all eigenvalues with their algebraic multiplicity. So this is substantially harder than what we've done up to now. Substantially harder. I'll give you... I'll give you one minute, one minute to stare at it, and to try to see if you can do it. You can't do it in one minute, but it's it's good exercise to to make an effort. Okay. An n by n matrix, all of whose entries are equal to one. What does this mean? What is this matrix? It's just this. All right. So A is of this form. One, 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 one. One, 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 one everywhere. Okay. The difficulty is it's not, you haven't been given, let's say it's five by five or it's six by six. It's n by n. It's n by n. And you're asked to find the, uh, the rank, the dimension of its kernel, and, right, and that, let, let's, <coughs> let's stay with that. So that's part A. Okay. Think about it for one minute. Think about it for one minute, and then, then I'll do it. Okay. One of the two questions is actually easy. Although it looks strange, one of the two questions in part A is actually easy. What is the rank? What does rank mean? What is the rank of a matrix? Okay. Yeah, so, so there's different definitions. In the case at hand, 
how, how can you express the, the rank in terms of, uh, if you look at the column vectors, look at all the column vectors, how can you express the rank in terms of those? Yes, Lum number of linearly independent column vectors. Number of linearly independent column vectors. Okay. In the case at hand, therefore, it should be very easy to see what the rank is. One. Okay. If this is, it's the same one. But all these column vectors are actually the same. Okay. So what's the number of linearly independent? Only one. So rank of A is equal to one because um, um, that is that is is the number of linearly independent column vectors. Now, the kernel of A, we're not told to find the kernel. We're, we've been told, what is the dimension of the kernel? What is the dimension of the kernel? Okay. N minus 1, right? So you observe. OK, now recall uh, the dimension for any n by n matrix, the dimension of the kernel of A. Okay. The dimension of the kernel of A plus the rank of A will be equal to n. Okay. We just saw that the rank is 1, so the dimension of the kernel is n minus 1. And that's it. That's, that's part A. That was the one with it worth a few points. Now, OK. Now, we have to find all the eigenvalues of A along with our algebraic multiplicity. Along with the algebraic multiplicity. OK. All right. So does anyone, the eigenvalues of A along with the algebraic multiplicity. <coughs> OK, so part B. Can, I, can someone tell me one eigenvalue? One eigenvalue. Zero. No, that's not true. Zero. Zero. So we've just seen that the dimension of the kernel, the dimension of the kernel is n minus 1. So the kernel is non-empty. Okay? What does it mean for a vector to be in the kernel? Remember, v belongs to the kernel of A means what? Means what? that a times v is equal to 0, so the 0 vector. Okay. In, particular, in particular, v is an eigenvector. Okay. So v is an eigenvector. Is an eigenvector. Okay. Uh, with what eigenvalue? Yeah. Okay. All right, all right, all right, right. So we so we found one eigenvalue. So, so, so zero, zero is one eigenvalue. Okay. 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 Let me make it. Let me make it a little bit simpler for you. Let me make it a little bit simpler for you. Okay. So. Okay. Well, okay, so now, so we found one eigenvalue. What is the multiplicity? What is the algebraic multiplicity? Well, what? Okay, what is the multiplicity of this eigenvalue? It's not one. Okay. You've done the notion of geometric multiplicity? Geometric multiplicity? Okay. You haven't done geometric multiplicity? You have? Okay, okay. So what is the geometric multiplicity? What is the definition of the geometric multiplicity of, an eigen, of, a, of a particular eigenvalue? Dimension. It's the dimension of the corresponding eigenspace. Okay, the dimension of the corresponding eigenspace. What is the, the eigenspace? Okay, do we know what the dimension of the, of the eigenspace corresponding to zero is? N minus one. So, so now, so dimension of kernel A is equal to N minus one. Okay, so the geometric multiplicity of, of the eigenvalue zero is n minus one. Is equal to n minus one. Okay, 
Now, we've been asked about the, the algebraic multiplicity. The algebraic multiplicity. Okay? Okay. So, the algebraic multiplicity. So, what is the... Um, so, we found the geometric multiplicity. Is there a relation between the algebraic and the geometric multiplicity? A relation between the algebraic and geometric? One of the two is bigger than the other. Remember? Yeah. The algebraic is always bigger than or equal, bigger than or equal to the geometric multiplicity. Okay. So, what do we derive? So the, so the algebraic multiplicity of 0 is greater than or equal to n minus 1. Okay. So it's either, if it's greater than or equal to n minus 1, it's either n minus 1 or it is n. Okay. Wait, can it be, can you rule 1 out? Can you rule 1 out? Could it possibly be n? Okay. Could it possibly be n? No, because there's another eigenvalue. Yeah. Well, how do you know there's another eigenvalue? No. You can look at the trace, for example, yeah. So the trace of the matrix is equal to the sum of its eigenvalues. So it's sum of eigenvalues. Okay, it's the sum of the eigenvalues. So, in particular, the trace by inspection is n. Okay. So, if it had multiplicity, um, if the uh, all right, if the if it had multiplicity n, it would mean that all the eigenvalues are zero. All the eigenvalues are zero, but it can't be because the sum of the eigenvalues must be n. Okay, the sum of the eigenvalues must be n. So, actually, you can actually find the next eigenvalue. Is uh, n minus one, okay. and what's all right? So, so we have we found one eigenvalue. Its algebraic multiplicity is n minus one. There will be another. There will be another. Okay. There will be one more eigenvalue, and what must the other one be? So we have trace is equal to the sum the sum of the terms on the diagonal. So in this case, it's n. The definition of trace, though, it is also the sum of the eigenvalues. So it's lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus, plus lambda n minus 1 plus lambda n. Okay. We've just seen that there are n minus 1 of these eigenvalues are equal to 0. Okay. We've seen that n minus 1 of these eigenvalues are equal to 0. So the remaining one, so lambda n must be equal to, um, must be equal to n. Okay. Now, what's this algebraic multiplicity? One. 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 With algebraic. Okay. Okay. So th this is, this is, may maybe part A was not too difficult. Part B was was harder. Okay. All right. Let's let's go over it again. All right. So you're given an n by n matrix, all of whose entries are one. So that's the matrix. Okay. But it's n by n here. Right. N can be can be anything, as large as I like. Okay. The question number one: find the rank and find the dimension of the kernel. Okay. This is quite easy if you just remember the definitions. Just remember the definition. The rank is the number of linearly independent uh, <coughs> column vectors. Okay? In this particular case, all the column vectors are the same vector, are the same vector. So you're just taking the same vector n times. Okay? So what's the largest number of linearly independent such vectors? One, only one. Okay? That means that the rank is one. Okay? And now the dimension of the kernel, well, you only have to remember there is a, right, for any matrix, for any n by n matrix, there is a relation between the dimension of the kernel and the rank. Okay? Their sum must be must be n. Okay, so you find just the dimension of the kernel of the kernel then minus n is one. Okay, the dimension of the kernel is n minus one. Part B: find all the eigenvalues along with their algebraic multiplicity. Okay. So this looks somehow awful at first at first glance, okay. but now you think. Now we've just seen that the dimension of the kernel is n minus one. The dimension of the kernel is n minus one. Okay. So, right, but right, any vector that belongs to the kernel 
is an eigenvector with, with, with eigenvalue zero. With eigenvalue zero. We've just proven the dimension of the kernel is n minus one, right? So we certainly have n minus one linearly independent eigenvectors with, the, with, uh, with eigenvalue zero. Okay. Right, so the algebraic multiplicity of this space is, is at least n minus one. Okay. Is at least n minus one. We don't know if it's n minus one or n. We recall that the sum, that the trace is the sum of the eigenvalues. And, the, uh, right? and in particular, in this case, it must be n. It must be n. All right. So we see that, well, we know that n minus 1 of the eigenvalues must be 0. Right? So the remaining 1 must be n. The remaining 1 must be n. Okay. All right. So, so the eigenvalues, so we have two eigenvalues, 0 and n. 0 has algebraic multiplicity n minus 1, okay, because it arises n minus 1 times. And the remaining 1 has algebraic multiplicity 1. <coughs> Is there any question? In every matrix, yes. the trace is the sum of the eigenvalues? Uh, yeah, well, well, if you have n different eigenvalues, yes. If you have n different eigenvalues, yes. If you have n eigenvalues, I'm sorry. If you have n real eigenvalues, yes. And it has to be an n by n matrix? Yes. <coughs> Otherwise, you can't even define the trace. You want the diagonal, right? That goes from 1, and from one, 1 to n. <coughs> n. Trace is only defined, only defined for square matrices. For square matrices. Yeah. OK. Yes. A what? It's one. Okay, what's the geometric multiplicity? What's the definition of geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue? It's the dimension of the corresponding eigenspace. Okay. The dimension of the corresponding eigenspace. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, so, the eigenvalue zero has geometric multiplicity n minus one. Okay. This n minus one vector. So that you you have only one vector left. Only one vector left. That must be the eigenvector. Okay, yes? Um, so if n minus the rank of a is the algebraic multiplicity of zero, generally? n minus rank of a is the geometric multiplicity of zero. It's the dimension of the kernel. Okay, the dimension of the kernel is the geometric multiplicity. Okay. Okay. It's the, it's the dimension of the eigenspace that corresponds to the eigenvalue zero. Okay. The eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue zero is a kernel. Right. Okay. okay. Once we're at this, once since we're at this, let me give you another problem of the same flavor. The same flavor. Okay. Okay. You are given okay. an n by n, no, or let's say a three by three matrix, okay, with uh, with uh, let's say three different eigenvalues, different eigenvalues. You are told that the uh, the elements, the entries on the diagonal, are one, two, and three, okay, and that the matrix is non-invertible. Okay. Prove that one of the eigenvalues must be strictly greater than three. Let's write it like this, strictly greater. Okay. It's of the same flavor. What? Not than yeah, strictly greater. Strictly greater. Okay, so I've been. To, I've told you there's a three by three matrix whose entries are one, two, and three, and who knows what they are 
away from the diagonal. So you're not told. You're not told. Okay. That's all. The, okay, there's three different eigenvalues. The matrix is not invertible. I right, prove that one of the eigenvalues must be strictly greater than three. Okay. This is very, all right, so it's challenging. In fact, the solution can be written from here to there. Okay, okay take one minute, one minute to, to think a little bit about it, and then we'll, we'll do it. Yes? How do you know there is a second B? How do you know what? How do you know there is a second B which is included in the kernel A? How do you know there is a vector V that's included in the kernel? A. In here. Okay. Okay. Um, well, you know the kernel. The kernel is, M, right, is, is a subspace of Rm here. Uh, it has n, n, n minus one. 1. What does that mean? Its basis has n minus 1 linearly independent vectors. In particular, there are vectors in there. There are n minus 1 vectors inside. Okay. You're, the kernel is a subspace which has dimension n minus 1. What does that mean? It's not empty, right? So there are vectors inside. Okay. Anyone have an idea here? Yes? Well, is saying that because the matrix is not invertible, yes. that's sufficient reason to say that one of the eigenvalues is zero, right? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Okay. You Sure, if you could. So, so let's see. So we have three. You've been told there are three different eigenvalues: lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. Okay. You just observe now. Now, the matrix is not invertible. The matrix is not invertible. That means that means that one of the eigenvalues must be zero. Okay. Could you? Right. So that's correct. Okay. So, the so, so one of the two. One of the two is zero. Yeah. Okay. So the trace is six. Right. Because you add up the diagonals. Yeah. And okay. Since Right, so trace of A is equal to, it's, it's the sum of the elements of the diagonal, 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. Okay? The trace is also, we know, is the sum of the eigenvalues. Okay, and we've just seen, we've just determined that one of the eigenvalues must be 0. So it's just lambda 2 plus lambda 3. Yes, can you finish it off? Yes. I've told you they're different. I've told you they're different. You're told they're different. Okay. 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 So, so that's correct. So observe. So you have two numbers. Lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is equal to 6. Okay. Okay. So one of them and lambda 2 is not equal. Lambda 2 not equal to lambda 3. They can't both be less than or equal to 3. If they're both less than or equal to 3, then their sum would be less than or equal. Um, uh, yeah. So, so observe. So. So you get that one of the two, suppose, suppose lambda 3 is greater than lambda 2, okay? then lambda 3 must be greater than lambda 3, greater than 6 over 2, which is 3. Okay. It's slightly tricky. It's slightly tricky. Okay? But that it, in the end of the day, it's a simple idea. There's a 3 by 3 matrix, three different eigenvalues. Three different eigenvalues. Okay? You've been told three, uh, three things, if you're careful. The entries of the diagonal are 1, 2, 3. three. Okay. You're not told what the rest of the matrix is, so that's, it's arguable if it's helpful or not. The matrix is not invertible. Okay. The matrix is not invertible, and also the, the three eigenvalues are, are, are different. Okay. So because the matrix is not invertible, one of the eigenvalues must be 0. One of the eigenvalues must be 0. Okay. Why? Can someone argue for me why? Yes? Because then A has a kernel. Yes, because A has a kernel. Okay. Right. Can you? All right. Okay. Okay. Now, all right. All right. Um, so now the trace, the trace of the matrix must be equal to. So we want information regarding the remaining eigenvalues. We've been told what the elements on the diagonal are, the elements on the diagonal. So it's a good idea. We know a relation, I mean, between the trace and the elements on the diagonal. The trace must be the sum of the elements on the diagonal, which is 6. Okay. For three different eigenvalues, the trace is also the sum of the eigenvalues. Okay. So lambda 2 plus lambda 3 must be 6. Okay. 
And because the two numbers are different, you deduce that the larger one must be strictly greater than 6 over 2, which is 3. That's it. Okay. All right, let's do, okay, so that's, that's about determinants. Now let's do the one where the, okay, so for a stockbroker, Trade stocks X and Y. Okay. He says that in January he sold of X and uh, and seven hundred of Y. Okay, and his balance was. was 500. Okay. In February, he sold 200 of X and bought 200 of Y. Okay. And his balance was equals minus, uh, equals minus 100. Okay. In March, he sold 300 of X, bought 100 of Y, and the balance was 400. He does not reveal what the prices were uh, for X and Y in these transactions. Okay. Suppose that the prices of x and y were constants x and y, little x and little y. OK. What is the most reasonable guess little x for the price is little x and little y suggested by the method of least squares okay all right so think about it for 1 minute think about it for 1 minute okay yes go ahead Here. Yeah, can you say it again why you know one of them is zero? Okay, 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 okay. The matrix is not invertible. Okay, let me give you the, the answer I prefer. The matrix is not invertible. You have three different eigenvalues. What can you say about the determinant? What can you say about the determinant? Zero. Okay, the determinant is zero, correct. Can you link it to the three eigenvalues? Yes, so you should remember this. The determinant is the product of the three eigenvalues. The determinant is zero, and it's the product of the three eigenvalues. So one of them is zero. OK, so let's write out a system. Let's write out a system. OK, let's write out a system. OK. okay. So we're assuming, we're assuming that the prices are constant. We're assuming that the prices are constant. So let's down, write down the system we would like 
we would like them to satisfy. Okay. In fact, they don't. Right. So let's write down the system we would we would like them to satisfy. We're assuming the prices are little x and little y in, in all three of the months. All three of the months. Okay. What does it mean? All right. So if the price is x, and you sell, you sell 100 stocks at the price of x. Okay. Then you're making profit times how much? What, what's the what profit you make? make? So in January, in January, have January, the profit is 500. Okay. okay. So the profit is 500. You sell X stocks. If the price of one is X, how much are you gaining by selling 100 stocks? 100 X. Okay. Right. And if you're selling 700 stocks whose price is Y, how much profit are you making? 700 Y. Okay, so that's, this, that's for January. Now for February, let's see, the profit, you actually lost. So the, the balance is, uh, the, if you like, the balance is minus 100. Okay, minus 100. Now let's see, you sell, he sold 200. He sold 200 stocks okay, of X. When you sell at the price X and you sell 200 stocks, you make how much? 200 X. Okay. But now, but now he bought, he bought 200 of y, he bought 200 of y. So what? So what should we say? Minus it's minus, minus, right? Why? And the balance was negative 100. Okay. All right. And in March again, he sold 300 of x, so you make 300 x. Okay. And you bought 100 of y. Why? And the answer is 400. Right, and we're assuming x and y are some constants. Okay. So we're trying to find the best, the most reasonable guess for x and y based on this, three, this system with three equations and two unknowns. The system does not have a solution. It does not have a solution. So we'll find the best possible guess by the method of least squares. So use method of least squares. Use the method of least squares. OK, let me remind you of the method of least squares. Can we write this equation in matrix form? Can you write in the form AX equals B? AX equals B. Okay. Let's say A vector X equals B. What is the vector X? Okay, okay. So, so, well, A will be, will be the, the matrix of coefficients, so 100, 700. 200 minus 200, 300 minus 100. Okay. The vector, vector of unknowns. What are the unknowns? Little x and y. Okay. Okay. And what's b? Here are the values we've been given. So it's 500 minus 100, 400. Okay. So let me remind you the method of least squares, which most certainly is on the quiz. So that's the answer. Okay, 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 okay. So how are you going to use the method of least squares? How do you so this system as it stands does not have a solution. Does not have a solution. Right? So the method of least squares. of least squares are squares. Rather than solving this equation, ax equals y, it says solve which equation? Who remembers? Solve which equation? Yes? X transpose, I mean, no. A transpose yeah. A, all these T's inverse? Yeah, so, so wait. Solve the equation. You just Here's a nice way to remember it. You look uh, at this equation. You just multiply by A transpose. Times x is equal to the A transpose b. Okay, so you want to solve this equation. Okay. The solution, right? The solution x star of this of this okay. is the best. Uh, what does it say? Is the best? Is the most reasonable guess? Will be.
Okay. What just? Okay. Okay. All right. So, so again, you could you could alternatively you could write that x star will be a transpose a inverse times a transpose times b. Okay. But actually, let me remind you, usually when you want to solve with a method of least squares, it's actually easier to just write out this system and solve it, and solve it without having to find the inverse of a matrix. It usually saves time to just solve the system straight away. OK, so what is this? Let's write it 1. So 1 becomes A transpose A. So that's going to be 100, 700, uh, 200, negative 200, 300, negative 100, times 100, 700, 200, minus 200, 300, minus 100, times x, times xy, if you like, is equal to a transpose this thing times b, 100, 700. 200 minus 200, 300 minus 100, times the vector b, which is whatever it is, 500, negative 100, 400. Okay. So in the end of the day, can someone tell me, without a, b before I do the manipulations, what system will we end up with? How many equations? How many unknowns? Two equations, two unknowns. Two equations, two unknowns. So one, sorry. So this becomes let's call this two. So to find the coefficient matrix, I just have to do this multiplication, which is not nice. And so we'll double end with, with so let's factor out a ten to the fourth. So I factor out all the zeros in the left hand side, and that's going to become one plus four plus six, so ten. Okay. Then seven minus four, that's sorry, three. One plus four plus nine. You're absolutely right. 1 plus 4 plus 9, that's 14. Thank you. Okay. So 7 minus 4, that's 3. Minus 3, that's 0. Right? 0. Uh, 7, so right, it's supposed to be symmetric. 7 minus 4 uh, minus 3, so that's 0 again. And here, 7 minus 4, that's 3. No, no, wrong, wrong. No. 7 times 49 plus 4 is 53. Plus 1 is 54. x, y is equal to, uh, oh wow, is equal to, so let's see, uh, 10 to the fourth, and then let's see, 5 minus 2 is 3, plus 7 is 10. Okay. 35 minus 2, oh no, plus 2 is 37, plus 37 plus 4 is 41. Or, no, no, minus 4 is, oh, damn, sorry. 35 plus 2 is uh, 37. Yeah, what? Here? No, no. Okay. Right. okay. All right, did anyone find this one too? 33. All right, I thought so. Okay. All right, and so the answer is, which actually, it's actually easy to find. So x is equal to what? 15 over 14. And y is equal to 33 of 54. OK, so that's it. That's it. Just to keep in your mind, with the, leth the method of least squares, all right, so you have a, you have a system whoops, with more, um, more, equations than, more equations than unknowns. You can write it in the form ax equals b. Okay, the system that will not, in general, have a solution. Okay, it will not have a solution. In order, in, order to find, in order to find the solution given by the method of least squares, you just start with your original equation and you multiply by a transpose, by a transpose. That'll give you a system with the same number of, of equations and unknowns. Okay. And usually, the simplest way to solve the system is not to actually invert the matrix, but just stick with the system in this form and just solve it as you've learned how to do. All right, now, I have some more. Come again, what, what, yes? I just solved it. So all right. So so, I could have said I could have said all right. I'm going to calculate a transpose a, which I did just here. Okay. All right. And I'm going to find I'm going to find its inverse. 
and multiply it on the right, and that's going to be the solution. Okay? That's one thing I can do. Okay? The other thing is I can just write out, I can just solve the system. This is going to be, I know the coefficients of A, I know the coefficients of A transpose, I can calculate this matrix. So it's matrix times x equals this right-hand side. And you can solve it you know, by reduction or by, by any other way you prefer. If you prefer to invert, you can invert. It's fine. It's fine. You can invert, but it's usually, you know, if you had a 3 by 3 matrix here, if this was a 3 by 3 matrix, finding the inverse is usually complicated. Okay, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay, um, I, now, could, could I do more somewhat harder problems, but I could just answer questions if you prefer. You'd prefer if I just answer questions? You have problems you'd like to ask me, things you'd like me to review? Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's. Yeah, so that. Okay, we can do that. I'm under the impression that that's not on the quiz. Yeah, that you've already covered. I can do it if you like. I don't mind at all. But I don't. Right? I think it's on the quiz. Also. It's not. Really I think Adrian told me 5.3 to, to 7.2. I don't know. Okay, you know best. All right, let, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, it's in 5.3. Five point three is orthogonal matrices. But you yeah, I'm asking for like the orthogonal basis, but I know orthonormal basis is not right. Yeah. What would then what's the difference between orthogonal and orthogonal basis, orthonormal rate? When you're calculating the orthogonal projections, you generally have to calculate what you call basis. Yes. So that's what he's saying you're doing. And that's that's covered in the section five three. An orthogonal basis, I think, means just that all the vectors, all the basis vectors, are normal to each other. But they don't have to have norm 1. No, they're, they're no? orthonormal. They're orthonormal. OK, so they're orthonormal. So it's just the same thing. Yeah. So you just do Gram-Schmidt? Yes, you do Gram-Schmidt. Exactly. So orth orthogonal basis is the same thing as orthonormal? I think so. I think so, yeah. I, I, it may be, maybe length, maybe orthogonal means they have length one, and orthogonal, I'm sorry, orthogonal means that all the two, two different vectors in that basis are normal to each other. So the only real difference is you don't have to worry about length. Then we don't have to worry about length, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, anyway. Orthogonal. There's an orthogonal matrix in an orthogonal basis. The truth is I don't know, all right? So you can ask your instructors. Okay. Now, you want me to do some problems? Maybe. Yeah. Can you go over dynamical systems? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Adrian told me to cover that a little, but okay, okay. Um, I, I mean, just in general. I mean, just, just in general, not any specific problem. No, I mean the best I can do is to give you a specific problem. I mean, <coughs> all right. I mean, so so. Let, let, let's see who wants to ask me problem, particular problem, because to give you, you know, the whole review of dynamical systems, I can give you the definition. You know, you can draw, you can draw a trajectory or something. But yes, you have a yes. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't think I have it. Yeah. So that's actually, that's good because that's a that's a dynamical system. Okay. Okay. So that answers two questions in one. So question one, spring two thousand six. Okay. A is a two by two matrix with two linearly independent eigenvectors V one V two with corresponding eigenvalues. Lambda one positive and lambda two equals zero. Okay. Uh, okay. Consider the dynamical system. Wait, this is this about. Consider the dynamical system X of T plus one equals A X of T. With initial condition uh, 
x0 is equal to 2v1 minus 3v2. So I'm actually quite touched you asked this problem. This was, this was when I was teaching 202. And I actually think this is, I suggested this problem. So I'm actually, all right. All right, so, all right. So, what did it say? Now describe and sketch the trajectory of this dynamical system. For positive values, all right. So let me. Uh, it, there's a hint. You must dis distinguish cases based on lambda one, based on the, yeah, based on the value of lambda one. Okay. Let me give you a very a one minute reminder of what a dynamical system is. Let me give you a one minute reminder of what a dynamical system is, and then let's do this. OK, so a dynamical system means the following. A dynamical system is basically a sequence of vectors obtained in the following way. You start with a vector x0, x0. It's a sequence of vectors. The first vector is something given to you, x0. The second one arrives from x0 by multiplying by some matrix A. The next one is a squared. The third one is a cubed x naught. Okay. A to the fourth. Okay. Okay. It's a sequence of it's a sequence of vectors where you're given an initial vector and you're given a multiplying matrix A. Okay. And and each term is arises by multiplying x naught a times x naught a, a squared times x naught and so on. Okay. Okay. So so so. So you want to describe you you want to describe the trajectory. The trajectory is basically all this, the sequence of vectors. It's a sequence of vectors. OK, so let's give the answer to the problem. Okay. We've been told that the, the matrix has, that we have a matrix A with eigenvalues, with, with two eigenvectors, V1, V2 eigenvectors. And what are the corresponding eigenvalues? 0 and, what? Well, let's see, lambda 1 positive and lambda 2 0. OK. And you want, to, you want to understand this trajectory. You want to understand this trajectory. So let me, um, let me challenge you a little bit. I mean, OK, let, let, let's just, so basically, we've been told, we've been given the vector x naught. We'd like to have, we'd like to understand what x of t looks like. x of t, okay, x of t, which is whatever, um, a to the t times x naught, what this thing looks like. Okay. What this thing looks like. Let me challenge you. Let's find x1. We, we've been given x naught is equal to two, twice v1. Uh, what is x naught, by the way? y is v1 minus 3v2. OK, let's find x1. x of 1 arises how? We just multiply x0 by the matrix A. So you take A times v1 minus 3 times v2. OK. okay. Now, now, v1 and v2 are eigenvectors. v1 and v2 are eigenvectors. So what is A of v1? What is A of v1? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's lambda 1. So that, that's going to be <coughs> twice a of v1 minus 3 times a of v2. OK. a of v1 is just twice lambda 1 times v1. OK. What is a of v2? What is a of v2? Zero. zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Minus 0. Because it has uh, the eigenvalue corresponding to v2 is 0. OK, so we just found x of 1 is finally 2 lambda v1. What is x of 2? It is a applied to x of 1. OK, 
So it's A applied to 2 lambda 1 v1. Okay. This is just a constant. It goes out. So it's 2 lambda 1 times A of v1, which is what? What is A of v1? Lambda 1 v1. We already have the other one, so it's 2 lambda 1 squared v1. Right? So we start with 2 v1 minus 3 v2. We get 2 lambda 1 v1, 2 lambda 1 squared v1. What is x of 3? It's going to be a applied to x of 2. And it will thus be, can someone tell me? What will it be? Yeah. 2, if you do exactly the same calculation, 2 lambda 1 cubed v1. Okay. What would x to the 4th be? 2 lambda 4th v1. All right. So in general, in general, what will, um, so in general, what will x at time t be? Can someone tell me? Two lambda one the p v one. Okay. So we found a general formula. We found a general formula for all these vectors in the trajectory. If I asked you to graph it, if I asked you to graph it on the plane, could you do it? You've been given a hint. You've been given a hint that somehow. The behavior of this trajectory depends on the value of lambda 1. OK. So let's suppose this is the vector v1. Let's suppose this is the vector v2. Okay. OK. So we start somewhere. We start, well, actually, no. Let, let's, yeah. So, so we start. The starting point is, is twice v1 minus 3v2. So it's somewhere down here. OK. This is x0, which is twice v1 minus 3v2. Okay. What is going to be x of 1? Where, can you describe it for me geometrically? In this picture, where is v1 going to lie? Is it going to be down there? Or how is it going to depend on v1 and v2? It's, it's on v1. Well, it's on this line. It's on the span of v1. It's on the line that passes v1. Okay. OK, so what I'd like to say is, well, um, all right, so, so x1 will be on the line spanned by v1. OK, where will x2 be? On this line, on this line. It's a constant times v1. So x2 will be still on this line. x3 will still be on this line. x4, all of them will be on this line. The question is, all right, so they lie on this line, but do they approach a point somehow? As t goes to infinity, how do they behave? Where do they go? Ah, careful. You've been, you've been given a hint. It depends on the value of lambda 1. How, can you explain to me how does it depend on lambda 1? Yes? OK, um, if lambda 1 is less than 1, then it'll be going towards yep. 0. Yep. And then if it's equal to 1, it'll remain at that point. Yes. And then if lambda 1 is greater than 1, it'll be going to infinity. Yes, infinity. correct, correct, correct. So, so we've just seen that x of t is 2 lambda 1 to the t v1. OK. So what this thing does, what this vector does, depends on lambda 1 to the t. Right? In particular, it depends on the value of lambda 1. Depends on the value of lambda 1. OK, so if lambda 1 is greater than 1, this coefficient is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So how will the points behave? Okay. It'll be here and then there, and there, and there, and there. All, all of lambda this going off to infinity. OK, if lambda, what's the next? You might say, what if lambda 1 is strictly less than 1? Okay, this thing goes to zero. This thing goes to zero. So again, we stay on the line, but then um, we stay on the line. But where it stays, where? Careful. Where does it stay? Two v two. Yeah. yeah. If this is two v two. Nah, no, no. We've been told lambda one is positive. So 2v2, if, if lambda 1, so if lambda 1 off to infinity, if lambda 1 less than 1 approaches 0, if lambda 1 is equal to 1, it stays at the vector 2v. OK. Yes? Uh, no, no. Um, no, you just draw different dots, but you, have, you, would have to, you would have to distinguish cases. If, so the traject I mean, it's a discrete thing. It's a sequence of vectors. If there's nothing continuous. It's a sequence of vectors. So you just draw dots for lambda 1 positive. You draw dots that go off to infinity. For lambda 1 less than 1, it goes to dots that go to 0. 
for lambda one equals one, just one dot, it stays there always. Okay, it's a it's a discrete thing. It's a sequence of vectors. So what's the difference between drawing a trajectory and drawing a phase portrait? Oh, yeah. So in the phase portrait, you want to, you want to connect. Yeah, you can draw a line to see how the dots behave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So to ask us to sketch the trajectory, we should we should only draw it for the initial starting position. No. You know, if, you, if they tell you to draw the trajectory, you should draw a sequence of points which, beha which illustrates how it behaves. Okay. Right. Yeah, a, a dynamical system is determined by two things, an initial vector, an initial vector, and a fixed matrix. Okay. So does this initial vector actually matter? Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what if, first of all, if the initial vector was zero? Okay, I see. I see. Right? Right? But it, it, it definitely matters. If V1 is here, you go off along this line. If V2, if V1 was here, you're going to behave along that line. So it certainly be, matters. Yeah. Um, okay. A, a, a phase point is more associated with something called continuous dynamical systems, which you will see later in this course. Okay, but this is a discrete thing. This this dynamical system is a discrete thing. It's a sequence of vectors. Okay, if you look at differential equations, you're going to have a continuous dynamical system where it's 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 a particle moving with time, not at times t1, t2, t3, but continuous in time. Okay, you don't have to worry about this right now. Okay. Um, how about how about you ask me another question? So, it, does anyone you know? I have some nice problems I can do, or, or you can ask me more questions, yeah. guys. Um, on spring oh seven number three. Yeah, oh yeah, I might actually have that. One second. Spring oh seven. Yes, I have this. Yeah. So let a equals five negative four four negative five. Is that it? Uh -huh. Is that it? The one? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so wait. No, no, again. I'm under the impression from what Adrian told me that you don't have eigenvectors on this quiz. Is that right? I'm under that impression. Oh, we don't. I don't know. Right. Dan, that's, the, that's what I had a problem with. So well, he said, he said up to 7.2. That's what he told now, me. I don't, I, I really don't want to take responsibility for this. You should ask you. Okay. Yeah. Is, so I can just I stop know. at the values? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So you should ask your instructors. Okay, don't take my word. He told me up to 7.2. He might be, I don't know. Right, so, so just ask your instructors. Okay. You can't ask, you don't have class. Before. Send them an email. I don't know. I mean, that's... We don't have to do it. Are you not? They are or not? They are not. Okay. So do you still want me to do that? Otherwise, otherwise, it's quite simple, right? Yeah. You probably don't want me to do that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, two? I already have paid. Yeah, so that, that's, that's actually hard. Yeah. Okay, so you're given a matrix. Let, let's do two as a whole. So A is some given matrix. One, one, zero. One, zero, one. Zero, one, zero, 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 zero one. Okay. Find the three volume defined by the parallelepiped. Okay, so, so the first one is, all right, find the three volume defined uh, by the columns of this parallelepiped. So it's just, it's just the determinant of, uh, so, so you know that, it's determinant <laughs> A transpose A. So the volume is the determinant of A transpose A. You, you can calculate the determinant, that's it. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's a square root, right? It's a square root, so you calculate this, right? Okay, now for the other one, for the other one, so the question is augment the matrix, augment the matrix V in R4, in R4 unit matrix, I'm sorry, unit vector. Okay, what's the maximum? Maximum value of. Uh, Determinant of A augmented with B. All right, so so A times B is the augmented matrix. Augmented. When you say okay. Augmented, you have to augment to the right. Yeah, it actually doesn't matter, but yes, it actually doesn't matter. But yes, it put it to the right, so you put it to the right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so. Okay, here's the way I wanted, to, I wanted to communicate the intuition. Let me just tell you the intuition, what it is. Okay, so you've been given 
three vectors in R4, in the four space, they form a parallelepiped, okay, so something solid, a solid, okay, and you, and you found the volume, done, done, okay. Now, you augmented, you add a, four, a fourth vector into the game, a fourth vector into the game, okay, and uh, you ask which is, of, which is of unit length, okay. You're asked what could the maximum possible value of these, of the parallelepiped <coughs> formed by the four vectors, what's the maximum value it could be? Okay, the answer is, okay, the answer is, I mean, you have the solutions. I'll give you the answer, and I'll give you the intuition. First, the answer and then the intuition. The answer is the maximum value, <coughs> value since, since V is unit length, Uh, is, is whatever it was for that, right? Is whatever it was? Two. Yeah, is two. So this is two. Is two. Okay. Now, why is that? Why? Why? Okay, let me give you an analog. Let me give you an analog for one dimension lower. One dimension lower, and I'll... Into zero. So explanation. In one dimension lower. Okay. Suppose I give you two vectors in R3, two vectors in R3, and I tell you find the value, so, so two vectors in R3, okay? And I tell you find, find, the, um, find the area, the area of this parallelogram. They form a parallelogram, find the area, okay? So let's, let me try to draw a picture. So we've got two vectors, let's say V1 is here, V2 is here. They form a parallelogram. And you can find the area. You've been given the two vectors, and you can find the area. Okay. Okay. Now, I give you, you're told, you can get an extra unit vector, an extra unit vector to play with, right? So V3, which is of unit length. V3, which is of unit length. Okay. The length is one. Okay. If you throw the third one into the game, you can form a parallelepiped in the way you've learned. You can form a parallelepiped in the way in the way you've learned. Okay, so so is it kind of visually clear? If there's v2, there's v1. You're throwing a v3 with unit length. You're asking what's the maximum volume this can have, given that you know the area formed by the first two vectors. Okay, can you give me a formula for the volume? The volume is the area, the area of the lower plane times the height, times the height. Agreed. Area is volume times height. In particular, in particular. It's this, what is the height? The height is this length, which is 1, times the sine of this angle, of the angle formed by V3 and this plane. So the volume is the area of the, the area formed by V1, V2, okay, times the height. What is the height? The height is equal to, all right, the height is equal to this length times the, uh, times the sinus of the angle formed by this vector and the, times the sinus of the angle formed by this vector and this plane. Okay, is it, is it visually clear somehow? Remember? All right. So what's the maximum the sine can be? One. So as long as you're playing with a unit vector, when can you achieve the, the greatest volume by doing this little game? Perpendicular by putting the unit vector perpendicular, and then you have a uh, you have a right angle okay. times the height. Let, let me just write it. Height is equal to length of v three of v three times the sine of phi. All right, where phi is angle uh, of the vector v three, the new the new vector you're throwing in, and the the plane spanned by V1 and V2, okay? So the most it can be, the most you can get is just what you had times one, yes? Uh, yes, 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 yes. So exactly, so that's the point. So you want to think of this augmented determinant as the vol. so in, in the dimension one lower, you're thinking of this determinant as the volume of the, actually the square of the volume of this the three-dimensional object you're forming. Okay. Okay, but isn't it uh, determinant of A transpose A? So, I mean, what's, how 
How do you... No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Determin wait, okay, okay, that's a question for you. That's a question for you. What's the determinant of A transpose compared to the determinant of A? It's the same. Determinant of A transpose is the determinant of A. So the bigger you're making determinant of A in absolute value, it's the same as determinant A transpose A. Squared. You can understand? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I can answer. I can. I, I, there are some, some somewhat tougher problems I'd like to do, but no, I mean, if anyone has questions, yes. Um, besides that the traces have to be equal, how else do we know that matrices are similar? Yeah, so again, I'm under the impression similarity is not in the, in the, uh, oh. am I right? Am I right? Is it in 7.2? I didn't see it. I similar, there's a definition of similar, all right? So similar, okay, I'll just answer your question. So A and B similar means that uh, there exists P invertible such that P inverse. A, P is equal to B. Okay. okay. Actually, you can find another necessary condition. Can you link the determinants? Yeah, I'd like to, maybe the last exercise I'll give you are playing with determinants, but now. So let's suppose, that, let's suppose I have two matrices A and B, or N by N, okay? And there, there exists an invertible matrix P, so that P inverse A, P is equal to B. What can you say about the determinant of A and determinant of B? They're equal. They're the same. Okay. So, notice. So that means they have to have the same eigenvalues? No. Uh, well, no, similar matrices do have the same eigenvalues, but it's not just because the determinants are equal. But Similar matrices do have the same eigenvalues. That's right. Okay? But you, you can't deduce it from this. But, but you can never mind. It from that and the, trace, the traces have to be equal. Yes, but that's not enough information. If the matrices are 50 by 50, you know the sum of the eigenvalues are the same. The product of the eigenvalues are the same. That's not enough to derive. Okay? But, but, but never mind. If you have similar matrices, the eigenvalues are the same. So, sorry, one more. If, if the traces of the matrices are the same, then yes, if they're similar, if, if matrices are similar, then their traces is, their traces are the same, and their determinants are the same. But if the traces are the same, they're not necessarily exactly, okay. exactly. Okay, now let's uh, let, let me do one more. You have these trick questions sometimes, once in a while, true or false. So let me do one of those. I mean, no, maybe someone else has a, another question. You want a trick question? But wait, you want the trick question? Well, let's do a trick question now, and then we'll. Okay, ask the general. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Let, let me write down the trick question, and then we'll answer yours. Okay. So, okay, true or false? There exists, well, you might have seen it actually. There exists non zero symmetric matrix A such that I n plus A is orthogonal. Okay. If you have the solution and you've read it, find a simpler solution because it's a much simpler one than this. Okay, so so, right, so think about it for a minute. <coughs> is the solution to you, Alex, as always, also linear combinations regarding vectors? Uh, for two by two, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So A skew symmetric. means that A transpose is equal to negative A. What does it mean for a matrix to be orthogonal? There's many definitions, but what's, what's the one that involves transposes? Yes? Um, the matrix sign transpose is I'm sorry, what? Um, a inverse equals A transpose. Yeah. Inverse equals A transpose. Okay. Okay, all right, so the answer is no here. Okay, so the answer is no, but now let me, let me think about it. Okay, so suppose... <coughs> okay, suppose there is such a matrix. Okay, then, right, so if it's... I n plus a transpose times I n plus a must be the identity. Okay, wait, whoops. So I n plus a transpose is I n transpose, which is itself, plus a transpose. Okay, times I n plus a. This is I n. Now we're assuming that it's skew symmetric, so a transpose equals negative a. So that's why a. n plus a transpose. Why it's 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 the same thing. I mean, think I mean, think about it. A plus b, you have stuff plus a plus b, and stuff, and you're just adding it. Okay. Now, isn't it the same if you just add the two and then switch, or if you just rotate them both separately and then add? Isn't it the same thing? You see, what is the transpose? You just rotate like this. Yeah, but you're putting the transpose inside. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. So A plus B transpose yeah, yeah, is equal to A transpose plus B transpose. Okay. Okay. Because whether you add them and then you switch like right. that, or whether you switch them first and then you add, it's the same thing. Okay, okay. so this, this gives us that. So A transpose, now I N minus A okay, times I N plus A is equal to I N. Okay? Why is this? Because we're assuming that A is skew-symmetric, so A transpose equals the minus A. Right, so what we derive is uh, I N, I N uh, minus A squared is equal to I N. Okay? Okay, so what we get is A squared is equal to zero. Okay, now is this a contradiction? <laughs> uh, Do you have another tree question? Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. So, so. Can you have another tree question? Yeah, but so, so, well, well, no, 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 no. Oh, wait, have we solved anything? No, we haven't. So, all right, so just look at the solution. So, just look at the solution. You just proved it was false. Yeah. Why? No, 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 no. no. Yeah, yeah, but a, I assume okay. a squared is zero. That doesn't mean a is zero. Sure, does. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh. Right. You can multiply both sides by a transpose, by yeah. a inverse. Yeah, but you don't know. You don't know it exists. You, you have you have you have not been told it's invertible. Okay, so you haven't solved it. Okay, so just look at what the what the solution was. Okay. Never mind. No, no. Yeah, I don't. Well, whatever. Okay, so we haven't solved it. <laughs> anyway, all right. So maybe maybe you want to ask me another question. So yeah. Wait, so, so, so what's... You want to solve this? Okay, well... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is false, but that didn't prove anything. What were we doing? <laughs> 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 you just say that the length okay. is every... Because we're transparent. You're saying that there exists some A's. Yeah, yeah. It's, Isn't that what this is? No, if it's not invertible, you can't deduce it A's, you know? Well, yeah, so, so I don't know. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I mean... Yeah, it, 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 I might be done. I have to think about it. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, no, no. So wait, 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 wait. No, no. It's not true. It's not true. So th this does not imply that a is zero. So just read the solution of the book. It does not imply that a is zero. Okay. It does not. Okay. No, it is. It's written here. Well, you can find it. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Does anyone have what? Right, you, we have another five minutes if you like. If you want me to ask a question private, to answer a question privately, I can do it.
No, because you can, you can look.